I've come to a bog, or maybe it's more of a fen. I don't know, it's the muddiest place I can visit right now. When I was a kid, I was really into goosebumps. Say cheese and die. It's a, it's a literary classic for the ages. But when I would watch the TV show, I would always hide when it came to this one particular part. I'd look away, hide under a blanket, something like that. I couldn't even bear to see this guy for one second when I was a kid. In my opinion, that's fair enough. There's something really morbidly fascinating, dare I say creepy, about a mummy. Coming face to face with someone who died centuries, if not thousands of years ago, it can be, you know, quite a shock. It's, there's really nothing like it, nothing else can put you in touch with the past quite like a mummy, quite like a real person. For eight-year-old Stefan, it was, it was just a little bit too much. I've recently found myself down a bit of a mummy rabbit hole once again for whatever reason, and I thought I'd share with you guys four obscure examples, some mummies that you might not know about. Give you some ammunition for historically themed daydreaming, which is, which is what life's all about. I think we all agree. During the dying days of the Archimenid Empire, around the turn of the Macedonian conquest, maybe a generation or two before, a young man was working at Chakrabad Salt Mine. I say man, he was, he was probably around 16 years old. Certainly, probably a man in his time, definitely doing a man's work, but by our standards, younger than, than a miner typically is. As he worked away in his long brown shirt, red belt around his waist, bag over his shoulder, little did he realize the absolute disaster that was about to befall him. Presumably without warning, the mine he was working in collapsed on top of him and a few other chaps, freezing them in their moment of death. The salt that they were working so hard to extract, preserving them for millennia. I always find it interesting to imagine the daily lives of people who lived during what we now know were major historical events. Did he know who the Greeks were, who the Macedonians were? Did he care if he did? Or was he just trying to mine some salt, make some money, impress the people downtown? In my opinion, probably the latter. That's some good fuel for the daydreaming engine, if I do say so myself. Around the same time as Saltman 4 met his demise, Cloney Cavern Man and Old Crowan Man were thrown into a peat bog, which is why I'm here. I'm sure you're well aware the unique properties of bogs can preserve people in extraordinary detail for millennia. Bog bodies are, are probably the most incredibly preserved mummies in the entire world. Both of these chaps came to a very violent end. Cloney Cavern was hit on the head and chest with an axe. 40 centimeter cut across his abdomen suggests that he was disemboweled, and I only hope for his sake that that happened after he died. Old Crowan was stabbed, decapitated, and then even his torso was separated from his legs. Now here's where the story gets crazy. Interestingly, the key to their identities may lie in their nipples, and I'm not exaggerating. According to Eamon Kelly, the act of sucking on a king's breast was an important act of submission in prehistoric Ireland. <laughs> that is a, a spicy ritual you've got on the go there, Ireland. Very spicy indeed. Did the cutting of these chaps' nipples symbolically rule them out of kingship? The king was in theory a consort of the mother goddess, apparently, and at times of hardship, famine and things like that, where it, it seems like the king has lost the favor of the gods, they could be sacrificed. I'm speculating here, of course, maybe they attempted to become the king and failed, and so had their nipples cut before they were deposited in a peat bog. This isn't entirely speculative. They've got really well manicured hands. They have hair styled using imported resins. So these were probably not your average common folk. Whoever they were, if breast suckling sacrificial kings does not interest you, does not cause you to spend the rest of the day daydreaming, then we can't be friends. We're, we're different people. I don't know why you're watching this channel. On the 
On the island of Tenerife lived a truly unique people, the Guanches. For the most part, they were totally isolated on their islands, living essentially a Neolithic lifestyle up until the 15th century, when the Spanish arrived. Uh, they wore goatskin clothes, lived in caves or small villages, fought with giant wooden swords that were apparently bigger than the famous European Zweihanders, and, obviously, they mummified their dead, they mummified their royal families. They're a really fascinating bunch, there'll, there'll definitely be a video on the Guanches at some point on this channel. But for now, their mummification. Upper-class Guanches had their organs removed and replaced with volcanic rock, which is, of course, abundant on Tenerife. After this, they'd be wrapped in goat skins. If you were an absolute legend in your community, a real baller by Guancha standards, then you might be wrapped in about 15 skins, something like that. Your body would then be placed in one of the island's many caves, and a dry stone wall would be placed at the entrance to protect you. I mean, there are certainly worse places to be buried. The views in Tenerife are incredible. So interesting to imagine your family, you know, going through this process, taking you up the mountain, building a wall over the entrance of your cave, and then maybe, you know, sitting back, relaxing, looking out at the view of the Atlantic Ocean and maybe sharing a few words about you, you know, reminiscing over your life. Obviously, Egypt is the most famous place for mummies. Uh, but what is really fascinating is how far back in time archaeology is, is pushing this ritual of mummification. Mummy S293 is currently the oldest mummy at the Museum of Turin. He died in around 3600 BCE. He's so old that archaeologists had thought he was mummified by accident, just by the natural conditions of the desert. But it turns out uh, we were dead wrong about that. But um, tsh, forgive me. Chemical analysis of the body shows that before he was wrapped in linen, he was he was rubbed down with conifer resin and flax, presumably to uh, get rid of the aroma, the, s the smell of decay. What is fascinating is that those two ingredients were also used by later Egyptians in their embalming recipe. So Egyptians, since pre-dynastic times, had basically been working with the same recipe. This man lived and died a thousand years before the pyramids were built. He's as close to them as I am to William the Conqueror. It's extraordinary, really, when you think about just the sheer depth of time of, of Egyptian civilization. It's really unique, really, really special. And I daydream. I daydream about it. Let's go from the oldest Egyptian mummies to the oldest deliberate mummies in the entire world, the Chinchorro mummies of Peru and Chile. Now, the Chinchorro were a coastal people who started mummifying their dead around 9,000 years ago. Extremely ancient. Now, you might think because of the extraordinary age of these mummies that the process of embalming them was very simple. Um, but nothing could be further from the truth. They were extremely elaborate, extremely varied. Look at this perfect example. The three-year-old child's hand is covered with a form of sand cement. Adult fingernails have been inserted and allowed to protrude from the sand cement. They basically took the entire body apart and rebuilt it. First, they'd remove the skin and dry it. Uh, then they'd remove all the vital organs, of course, take everything out, uh, replace them with clay, ashes, plant matter, that sort of stuff. The muscles would then be removed from the bones. The body would be reassembled, sometimes with a stick replacing the spine, and then the original skin would be used to wrap everything back up. Uh, the head, of course, was also removed, the brain replaced again with ashes. Um, sometimes they would just build a new head entirely. After all of this, they would place a clay mask on top of the dead. How extraordinary. What an absolute fuss. Talk about elaborate. How can archaeology, with just the few material remains we have, even begin to understand such complex rituals? Every part of that process must have been loaded with symbolism for them. I suppose all we can say is that when a Chinchoro person died and they committed to this process of mummification, that the deceased's role in society totally changed from the one they had when they were alive into something more, something much more, something spiritual, something otherworldly, perhaps. Either way, their, their role in society must have changed. I don't believe you would change the physical remains so much if there wasn't also a dramatic 
philosophical change accompanying it. That's my speculation, though. What's interesting about them is that, in a way, from my perspective, they're almost blurring the lines between mummification and sculpture. How many body parts can you remove before that person ceases to be a mummy and starts being a sculpture made with some body parts? Interesting, interesting. If I made a sculpture and had a mummified arm in there, would that sculpture be a mummy? I can't answer this question, but I'm for sure going to be thinking about it all night now. So those are the four mummies I found interesting. Hope you found them interesting too. There's a big debate at the minute in, in our society, in our time, about the displaying of human remains and the showing of human remains. Um, I did put thought into this video, believe it or not, even though I'm just standing in a, <laughs> in a fen, poorly lit. If you want to know why I chose these mummies and my, you know, thoughts about the displaying of the dead, there's a video on my second channel coming out at the same time. I'll put it in the pinned comment in the description. Check it out. I'm going to leave you in the safe hands now of another extremely famous and important mummy. Hi everyone, I'm Stefan's Mummy. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you're interested in archaeology, then please consider subscribing. Also, a special thanks to the very generous Patreons for supporting my little boy. Bye!